SpaceX completed the first full static ignition test of the Monster Super Heavy booster last week. According to Elon Musk, they plan to conduct the first orbital test flight next month. That's March of 2023, if you were wondering. But he also emphasized that the launch cannot be said to be a success. It can only be guaranteed to be absolutely exciting. While the company has yet to release details of the test flight, one possible launch date, which is the 11th of March, has popped up on NASA's launch calendar. This could mean that SpaceX has notified NASA of preliminary launch data, or it could just be a placeholder. Let's find out more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX's highly anticipated Starship orbital flight test just got tentative launch data courtesy of NASA's WB-57 plane. NASA's WB-57 is a vital agency asset that has made several appearances on its space live streams. The aircraft regularly tracks high-flying objects and is the first to get visuals of crewed spacecraft returning from the ISS. During atmospheric re-entry, a spaceship encounters high temperatures, which leads to a communications blackout for a short duration. During the mission, this, this period is often one of the more stressful ones as ground control teams cannot contact the astronauts to check up on their well-being. However, sometimes even before the communication link is established, the WB-57 provides important visual confirmation of re-entry to the teams. NASA also uses the aircraft to gain visual information about test launches, and now the agency has reserved a time slot for aircraft to cover the Starship orbital flight test. Its calendar marks March 11th as SpaceX Starship launch placeholder, providing a tentative launch date for the rocket and indicating the assignment's arbitrary nature. The WB-57 is a historic aircraft and was the first jet engine powered bomber in the Air Force's fleet to drop bombs in wartime. It has also been regularly used in the Afghanistan war and right now is the only aircraft apart from the U-2 with a service ceiling higher than 50,000 feet, with NASA regularly flying the plane at 60,000 feet. This makes it uniquely suited to monitor high altitude rocket tests and spacecraft re-entries with the WB-57 providing coverage throughout the event until the ship lands. During the process of re-entering the atmosphere, the spacecraft will generate high temperatures due to severe friction, resulting in a short-term communication interruption. Therefore, this period is often one of the most stressful periods during space missions because the ground control team cannot contact the astronauts and the WB-57 can provide important re-entry confirmation support for the ground team during this time. However, this will not be the first time the WB-57 appeared in a SpaceX test flight. Primarily intended to capture those views for developmental data gathering purposes, NASA's WB-57 jets have been used for milestones like SpaceX's explosive Crew Dragon in-flight abort test and Demo-2 astronaut launch slash re-entry debut, as well as Starship SN-8. Likely made possible by a $135 million Starship Moon Lander development contract awarded by NASA in April of 2021, the space agency has positioned itself to benefit from SpaceX's success and leverage the company's extensive internal investments. Aside from exemplifying NASA's new and promising relationship with SpaceX's Starship development program, the use of space agency surveillance assets also serves as a convenient barometer to judge Starship launch timing. For its part, SpaceX sees Starship flight through a combination of onboard cameras and ground-based tracking systems. Starship is equipped with multiple cameras that provide live video feeds of the spacecraft's surroundings, which can be used for navigation and monitoring. Additionally, SpaceX uses a network of ground-based tracking stations that use radar and other sensors to track the spacecraft's position, speed, and trajectory in real time. This data is relayed to the SpaceX Control Center, where engineers can monitor the spacecraft's performance and make adjustments as needed. This multifaceted approach allows SpaceX to closely monitor Starship's flight and ensure its safety and success. 
and to control the Starship spacecraft, it's equipped with a suite of sensors, navigation systems, and control thrusters that allow it to adjust its orientation, speed, and trajectory as needed during the flight. Ground controllers also monitor the spacecraft's performance and can send commands to adjust its course or perform other actions. During landing, the Starship uses its engines to slow down and orient itself, and spacecraft engineers monitor the process closely to ensure a safe touchdown. Last week, SpaceX finally attempted to fire up all 33 engines on the 230 feet tall Super Heavy Booster. The test was almost a complete success since it met the time duration and saw 31 engines fully light up. According to Musk, Starship's highly awaited orbital test flight will throttle the rocket's engines to around 90%. The latest hot fire test fixed the level at only 50% with the rocket designed to generate up to 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, and according to SpaceX, the test saw the rocket generate 7.9 million pounds, indicating that it met the objectives even though two engines had shut off. Despite firing 31 engines, the rocket still set the world record for most engines fired at the same time, and if the upcoming orbital test flight is successful, Starship will also have set the record for the most thrust generated by a rocket. The current record is held by the Soviet Union's N-1 rocket, which was designed to generate 10.2 million pounds of thrust and made four unsuccessful launch attempts. The current most powerful rocket on Earth is NASA's Space Launch System, or the SLS, powered by four liquid-fed rocket engines and two side boosters for 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Starship, at 90% thrust, will easily surpass both the SLS and the N1 by churning out 15.3 million pounds of thrust. SpaceX's Starship system is the centerpiece of Musk's goal to enable routine interplanetary travel. The system designed to send humans and up to 100 tons of cargo to the Moon and Mars won a $2.9 billion contract to serve as NASA's first ride to the Moon carrying astronauts since 1972. SpaceX has launched nine high-altitude Starship prototypes from its South Texas rocket facilities. A Starship orbital flight is planned in the next month or so. Whenever it happens, the orbital test will demonstrate Starship maneuvers that can't be simulated using computers. SpaceX says in the document, SpaceX intends to collect as much data as possible during flight to quantify entry dynamics and better understand what the vehicle experiences in a flight regime that is extremely difficult to accurately predict or replicate computationally. The flight data gleaned from Starship's test will anchor any changes in vehicle design and build better models for us to use in our internal simulations, SpaceX said. Musk has envisioned using Starship for rapid orbit-based transportation between any two cities on Earth, an ambitious or pretty wild idea called point-to-point -point travel. A Starship trip between New York and London, for example, would take an hour. The 90-minute trip from Texas to Hawaii somewhat mirrors the idea, though it's just a test, and it's been a while since SpaceX or Musk have discussed any updates on point-to-point -point travel plans. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.